painting to photography, from beadwork to woodworking, KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University presents Artbeat. Artbeat highlights the work and accomplishments of local artists from in and around Winona. Support for Artbeat is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Today on Artbeat, we take a look at the 18th annual Frozen River Film Festival and sit down with local filmmaker Bryn Artley to talk about her short film, How Do I Be a Good Creator, which was shown during the Emerging Filmmakers portion of this year's festival. This film follows a time-lapsed Bryn Artley sharing some words of wisdom on what it takes to be a good creator through colorful drawings and well-thought-out writing. Highlights from this film include explaining the pressures that creators put on themselves to be perfect, how to combat hitting a creative wall, and the best way to keep the heart of your creation the same throughout the creative process. The Frozen River Film Festival is a yearly event showcasing many films, including local filmmakers focusing on community-based documentaries. I'm Abby Hockey. Join us as KQAL's Giovanni Bermudez sits down with local filmmaker Bryn Artley from the 2024 Frozen River Film Festival, today on Artbeat. Uh, so I'm joined here in the studio by uh, Bryn Artley, who is the creator and director of uh, How to Be Creative, which aired at the Frozen River Film Festival. How are you doing today, Bryn? Hey, Giovanni. Thanks for having me. I'm doing well. So let's just uh, get into the first question. How did this film come to be? Yeah, so uh, this film that I made, How Do I Be a Good Creator? Uh, and it really was a letter I wrote to myself trying to answer that question uh, just for myself. Um, I'd spent the last two years working on an animated project and uh, just basically had a, a, lot of, a lot of things to learn and a lot of things that when I, I started out, I was really excited about. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'll get this done in a couple of months. And then two years later, still wasn't done with it. And it, it got me thinking about, like, how do you... Uh, keep yourself going during the creative process, and ultimately, why why are you engaging in the creative process to begin with? And that was really what I wanted to explore with this video: is uh, answering the question for yourself as a creator. How do I be a good creator, and how do you uh, really honor that initial spark you had for creating something without getting caught up in your expectations for externally what you want to happen with it? So that was kind of the start of it was I uh, basically I wrote a, an essay, basically advice I'd want to give to myself just starting out with a, with a new project. And then I recorded uh, myself reading that letter, put it over, uh, uh, videotaped myself uh, drawing in a sketchbook, this little cartoon I'm trying to kind of portray the concept that I was talking about. So then put it together and, and that's the uh, finished film of how do I be a good creator. And that took you two years to produce. Wow. I, I should say that that film did not take me two years. The, um, there was a, an animated uh, film that I was working on that still is not yet complete. It's taken me two years. But uh, this film took me, uh, it did take a few months to film just because I was doing this in my, my odd hours after work. It took maybe a couple weeks to write the script. But then the, the filming itself, I just, I'd, I'd film an hour here and there over the course of, of several weeks and then the editing took quite a while too because it's kind of like stop motion um, hmm. editing the style of the video of drawing a bit and then trying to show the, the drawing is almost like a time lapse uh, speeding up and lining it up with the, with the narration. <laughs> right. When you, uh, you said you wanted to answer the question, you know, why do people, uh, why are people creative? You want to remind them of that. Do you think your film really carried that message? I hope so. Um, I would say it carried that message for me because um, again, it's, I think of it as I, it was a letter I wrote to myself and I felt like when I got done writing it, I'd answered the question of why I was, or I guess anytime why I, I tackle creative projects. And it's really, it, it's a, it's a connection to myself. And I'd never really thought of it um, portrayed that way before. It's some, one thing with anytime you're doing an artistic endeavor, I think it's easy to kind of write the project off as being too self-indulgent or, or too selfish because you're really doing it for you and I felt like I kind of needed to give myself permission um, as a creator to be like you know I don't really have a great logical reason to work on this project but I'm really excited about it and I really want to make it happen and exist and in uh, really writing this list letter I realized like that's a totally valid reason to work on things um, I, I, I think it'd be beneficial to hear that for a lot of artists because I think a big thing when you're creating stuff, you're dealing with your own self-doubt, um, 
I'm wondering, like, is what I'm doing actually making a difference in the world? Like, should right. I actually be working on something else? Um, but I really honestly think that, like, the more that you can work on that connection with yourself and do things just because you are connecting with yourself and making what you truly want to see in the world, I think then that external piece can potentially click in after um, because you're being true to yourself. You're being authentic. Well, that kind of leads into my next question, because uh, this film was, you know, was labeled how to be creative or how to be a crea- Is it how to be creative or how to be yeah. a creator? Sorry. I'll, how I'll do I be a good creator? Yeah. All right, thank you. you got it. Um, so this is where I would um, kind of ask you, what is a good creator, if you were to define it? Yeah. So how I define being a good creator in the film um, is essentially it's honoring the spark that you feel within yourself. So whatever got you to start creating in the first place, um, it's basically like a, a personal decision that you made for yourself. That to me, if you are doing it for that, those reasons, that intention of making what you personally want to make, um, that's what I would say is, is a good creator within this context. Um, and one thing I do talk about in the film is people create stuff for lots of different reasons. And that's totally cool. Like some people are like, hey, I really want to collaborate with um, other people. Or I really want to uh, just have a fun time and make something silly. And it's it's almost like none of those reasons are bad or like inherently like lesser or whatever. But what I was thinking about was this reason for creating just because it's something that you want to make for yourself as a way of connecting with yourself. I don't really feel like I've heard people talking about that as much. So that's why I focused in on that perspective for this film, because I wanted to I don't know, I guess I just wanted to, like, bring visibility to that perspective of if you want to be a creator just for yourself, then how to be a good creator is to honor that that spark that you feel with yourself. And that's totally valid. (laughs) So what do you think is the uh, perspective that's commonly portrayed then? I would say there's, in the the creative world, there's this, um, really like anything, like even if it's not a conventionally creative um, project, there's this. I don't know, kind of this this idea that you shouldn't be thinking about yourself. You should be making things for other people and Mm -hmm. that other people um, really value like people who are of service or do something like impactful for them. And I totally agree with that because it's like, I think about my life, what do I want to do with it? Like, obviously I want to be of of use and of service, but I think sometimes that that can lead to focusing in on the end product of stuff rather than thinking about the actual process of really what am I trying to, what am I trying to, trying to accomplish? And you can get so caught up in the details of, oh, I want this project to turn out this way that you lose sight of what you're actually working on. And it starts to feel a little bit inauthentic because you're so focused on an end goal and outcome right. that the process itself isn't really working. So I don't know. It, it's, it's kind of a, it's a philosophical, uh, Thing, I guess that I was just fascinated with as I was uh, writing this was going like okay so how do you truly be authentic I guess to yourself and your idea and why is it we I don't know it's, it's so easy to become ashamed and think like oh I'm being selfish or whatever when maybe focusing in on that vision is one of the best things that you can do to bring a project to completion. Well let's, let's dive in a bit to the process because I do remember uh, one part that stood out to me while watching your film was when you talked about, uh, and forgive me if I'm misquoting here, but it's uh, it was almost like, don't be afraid to change something later on, but don't completely mm-hmm. discard what you are working with. And because yeah. in both cases, you uh, make the argument that if you completely change what you did, you never had it in the first place. However, if you never let it change, it'll die. Can you dive into that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So basically, it's this concept of changed creations versus matured creations. Um, and my the way I'm defining that is changed creations are where you, you change a project to the point where it's beyond recognition of what it originally was. You're changing its inherent nature, essentially, versus a matured creation. You're building on the foundation of the project's past self. You're laying the groundwork of saying, like, okay, this was my vision originally. Now, of course, I don't know how many... Let's, let's say you're three months down the road working on whatever it is, and you're like, oh, holy cow, I was super naive. I didn't know <laughs> all that would go into it. 
I don't even know if I'm saying the right thing anymore. A matured creation is taking all of that like doubt and that questioning and saying, this is useful information that I can use to better my concept um, and help it grow. And so it's really this kind of growth mindset of you're not abandoning your past and starting over because you're like, oh, that was crap. Like, no, no, no. Like, you start where you start, and then you build off of that. And that's where I, I think um, a lot of projects, when you try to change them, it can just kind of end up killing the project because you just it turns into something that it never was versus a matured creation. That thing, it, it's always been that thing, but it's actually grown into itself now. So I guess that's how I, I just kind of describe the difference. Because um, I've definitely had projects where I, I go, oh, I, I want to make it something different. And then... It just it doesn't really work. It begins to feel inauthentic because it has changed. It's it's you lost sight of why you originally did it in the first place. Well, could you give us an example of one of those that you've worked with, where you've had something that became a changed creation rather than a matured one, or something else that's been a matured sure. creation? Yeah, um, I would say. So when I was a student at Winona State, uh, I worked on a film as part of a is like part of my senior project, and. I remember there got to be a point where I had I'd done several interviews in the in the area and I had lots of people on board and I was having so much fun telling people about it. It was like an interview style video where we talked about networking. Mm -hmm. And I had gone into the project with the idea of I want to make a film about networking. I think it's going to be like, I don't remember what I originally thought. I want to say like five minutes. It was just this little project. And the more excited that I got about the project over the course of several weeks, uh, the bigger and bigger it started to grow. So it went from me going like, okay, I'm going to interview a bunch of people about the concept of networking to, oh, holy cow, I just talked to like 30 people and they all had such great like sound bites. Now I want to make it even bigger. Maybe this could be like a feature length film. And it just kept growing and growing and growing until finally like my concept in my head for it was like way way too big it was much bigger than what I'd originally planned and when I tried to work on it it was like I'd get stuck because I suddenly had no idea what I'd originally wanted to do in the first place with it hmm. and it just was like too many ideas I'd infused into it and it kind of lost its focus so the only thing that ended up saving that project was dialing it back and going what did I originally intend to create and I was like okay it was a five minute film so Let's make a five-minute film. You won't be able to fit every single thing you found. You won't be able to fit all the 30 people you interviewed into this project. And that's okay because I didn't really have the structure created around the process of making the film to make a feature film. Then It's almost like it was like trying to do multiple projects at once when you can get so many different ideas in. And then when you're trying to do too many things, you end up doing nothing. So I think like if say I were to do that project again and I go and I say okay I'm gonna make this five minute film and then I get all these ideas and I'm like whoa there's more here that's almost like the springboard for another project in the future um and I don't know I think I think having done that it, it's like you need to focus on one project <laughs> at a time or you can just like drive yourself nuts with uh, getting down into the weeds and, and realizing, like, you're so confused on what the project actually is, you don't even know how to complete it. And that's something that I feel like a lot of people don't talk about with the creation process is uh, it's one thing to do all the techniques and skills of whatever medium you're doing. So, like, I'm a filmmaker. And I'm putting together films, and I'm trying to learn to be a better editor and a uh, better camera person. But I, I don't hear people talking about the actual creative process of the decision-making of, really kind of directing your project uh, forward towards what it is outside of a technical standpoint. It's more of like a, you get into like talking about like with businesses, like your vision and your, um, your values for what, what the project is. I guess I would say that I uh, give you an opposite for back to the, uh, what, what's a positive spin on it. Um, that, that film uh, I did eventually create, uh, I ended up calling it connectivity. Uh, and it was that, that five-minute networking film. And what I ended up doing was um, taking the, the stuff that I had learned over the course of filming it and trying to build on that foundation of the original vision while incorporating, like, the, the things I'd learned of, oh, okay, 
you're, when you're going to interview a whole bunch of different people, you want to take like the absolute best uh, sound bites that not only the ones that are really, really good, but they actually have to fit the story that you're trying to tell. Um, and that's just the thing about being a creator is you get better and better as you go because when you're first starting out, you don't know what mistakes um, you're going to make. And so you don't even know what you don't know. Once you know what you don't know, <laughs> then you can, you can improve and you can get better. I'm going to play a bit of the devil's advocate here. When it comes to maturing creations versus changed creations, you say a changed creation is unrecognizable to what it started out as. But couldn't a mature creation still fit that category? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's, it's kind of a fine line. And I think that's where it's, it's an, an anecdotal statement. I mean, if you're going to go in and get into the nitty gritty of it, I think it, it could potentially you see the, the crossover and, and the bleed and go, okay, well, how much has changed and how much is maturing? And I guess what I would say is it's all based on feeling for you as the creator. So only you as the creator can make that judgment call. Um, something that someone else looking at your work may say, okay, that's, that's changed or no, I think that one actually matured. It kind of different from an outside perspective, I guess, because it's almost like if you hired someone to finish a project and then say they left and another person jumped on that person that, that, that just took over is going to create an entirely different project just because of a different vision than the first person would have. And so I think it's, that advice bit, I don't mean to like get too in the weeds of saying like, you must do this or you must do that. It's more of just like a useful anecdotal guidepost of if you're struggling, decide what should you do next with your creation? Should you change something or should you allow it to continue down a certain path? Like using that as almost like kind of a compass, I guess, for yourself of being like, okay, does this expand upon my original idea or does this feel like I'm giving up on that idea because I decided it got too hard or something else was shiny and I wanted to follow that instead. And so I'm just giving that up and starting something completely new, which you can totally do. And it's completely valid because maybe you find out that like, Hey, that original idea, I just don't see it anymore. I see something else as being much more beneficial to work on. And that's, that's totally cool. Um, because I think there is value in, I guess, abandoning ideas and moving on to other ones. Like maybe, you got what you needed from abandoning <laughs> that idea. Like that process is good. But I think if your goal is to truly finish that project that you started, there needs to be that consistency of, okay, this is my vision. This is what I'm going to bring forward. <laughs> All right. So it is interesting how you pointed out that a changed creation isn't necessarily bad mm -hmm. and that it's it's just a matter of how the creator can deal with it or how they deal with what they're trying to get to, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Now, there is a, uh, a part of me that has to wonder, you know, people have different reasons for creating something, right? And you are trying to uh, shed some light on the idea that it's not selfish just to do something that you yourself want to do or that you want to kind of share, right? Correct. What advice would you have for people? Like, y your video is really good once someone has something to create, you know? But some people might be stumped on it. They may not know, you know, what what is a creation I can make, you know? Well, what advice would you have for them if they're really struggling for inspiration? Great question. Um, I would say for people struggling, um, what do I want to make? It's almost like you have to be quiet enough to listen to what, like, you naturally want to do. I think a lot of people get hung up on thinking, oh, I, I really feel like I want to be this kind of person or I really want to have this kind of impact in the world. And you immediately then kind of judge your own ideas and be like, before they even get in the door, you may not even realize you're doing it. You might say like, I love cartoons. Wouldn't it be so cool if I made a cartoon? But then think, well, what, what, what good are cartoons? Like what do cartoons actually do to make the world a better place? And I think you can talk yourself out of doing things without actually even getting into it and getting started. And so I think when you're coming up with ideas, it's almost like I'd liken it to like having a dog. Like I'm, I'm a dog person. I've got a, I've got a dog. Mm -hmm. And when I want my dog to come to me, I, I need to have almost like a positive reason for my dog to come. You can think of an idea as like a dog. <laughs> like if you want an idea to come to you, you have to be like a positive place for that idea to come towards you. So if I'm any other time I want my dog to come and I start yelling, bad dog, bad dog, that dog is not going to want to come near me because it, it's a negative reaction. 
And I think it's the same with ideas. You have to almost kind of be in a place of non-judgmentalness with yourself and saying, hey, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm open here for ideas as they come to me uh, over the course of my day. And instead of being judgmental about them and going, oh, that's a bad idea or that's a bad idea, uh, I'm just going to be open and say, you know what, like anything can come my way if something like sounds cool or is kind of weird, but I like the idea of it. Just kind of sit with it for a bit and take the time to, I guess, play with it. Um, I think it's when you get really serious with with ideas that can kind of kill the, the creativity because you're not really thinking about the process of having an idea come towards you or following what you genuinely want to do. You're more concerned about the outcome. All right. In that case, there'll just be a few more questions here. My first one being, when it comes to your film, looking back on it now, since you you know you got it done, is there anything that, as of now, since you know you kind of grown past a little bit, that you feel you want you would like to add to it that you didn't add to it? Yeah, yeah, good question. Um, one thing I just was thinking about is, as I created it, I didn't, I didn't mean it to be like a a set of rules that you must follow in order for a creation to be good or uh, kind of like change the matured creations, which one is which. Honestly, I created it as a piece of reassurance, of validation for fellow creators who I was imagining being in a similar boat to me and feeling like, okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I know it's important. And how do I like continue on that path of honoring what I want to do? when I don't really feel that, that validation, I guess. And what I, what I found was just like writing this, it was almost like I created these, almost like the, like the vocab words, just as a way of trying to understand what it felt like inside my mind of being like, okay, what, which direction should I clear this ship next? Um, and so I guess I would add on to that video is that it's not like if you aren't doing this particular method, you're a bad creator. Or if you're not following this exactly, or you have like a specific label that fits what you're doing, that therefore you're not truly a good creator. Like you can absolutely be a good creator in a whole bunch of different ways. But this specific set of circumstances that I encountered, this was the, the advice that I wanted to give myself. And um, in talking with people about it, I felt like um, there's value in having these kinds of discussions, talking with people about, well, what, what advice would you give yourself? And how do you, since everyone takes in the world from your own perspective, how do you get to the point where you're talking to yourself and giving yourself your own advice? Because ultimately, like, you can tailor make um, what you need to go forward on stuff. Um, so I don't know, it's kind of an ongoing um, discussion, but the big thing I want to caution people on is it's not a try to make some, anything a universal perspective or this is the right way to do things and other ways are wrong it's more of having multiple stories and ways of saying things as a way of validating each other i think um, as individuals and as creators all right um and you know uh if I, if i did portray the idea that i that i was seeing this as a set of rules that wasn't my intention uh i know that sitting oh, no. All right, I know that's saying in the auditorium, there are quite a few people who are actually quite thankful to see that film. And I, and I can tell you from first experience, it did touch them, uh, myself included, you know. Oh, um, oh thank you. That's so I, I do think you got your message across for a, for a good uh, mark, but it's good that you have that reassurance in there that, you know, this isn't a set of rules. This is more of the advice that I gave myself, and I'd like to share that advice with more people in case, they, in case they're in the same boat. Definitely, yeah. And assuming that, let's assume someone is in the same boat that wasn't able to make it to see it at the Frozen River Film Festival, is there anywhere they could see this film? Yes, absolutely. It is online. Um, I have a website that is under construction. So candle is in the, the thing you light on fire and can carry around. <laughs> and then frost is in the, uh, the cold stuff outside. Candle frost. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. And is this where people would also get to see your other work? Yes. I am still working on that animated project uh, that I referenced earlier. Um, but that will be released on, on the website sometime soon. Um, I've got a YouTube page and it's all linked up right there. So CampbellFrost.com is the, is the place to go. <laughs> all right. Well, I want to thank you for taking the time to do this interview with us. I know uh, I know it wasn't exactly the best timing, but I, I do appreciate you making the time. Absolutely. Thank you, Giovanni. I really appreciated uh, 
the questions and enjoy talking about it. So, thank you. A huge thanks to Bryn Artley, as well as the organizers of the Frozen River Film Festival 2024 for making this episode possible. To check out more of the event itself, go to ffrf.org. To check out more of Bryn's work, you can go to her website at c-a-n-d-l-e-f-r-o-s-t dot com. I'm Abby Hockey, and for more conversations on art, tune in to Artbeat Tuesdays at 1230 right here on 89.5 KQAL. For podcasts of Artbeat and other KQAL original programming, check us out online, on the app, or on your favorite smart speaker. Artbeat is written and produced by KQAL-FM on the campus of Winona State University. Visit us on the web at kqal.org.